Shalom, Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of uh, GMS here in Chicago, giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS, who are the true leaders of all Israel on earth today. Salutations to the Akim and the confusion of face Akim that are doing his work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so. And salutations to the Akwaf that are listening and learning. All right. Um, another quick lesson into the uh, history of the Jews. All right. 1895 by uh, Hendrik uh, uh, Gratz. Okay, this is uh, volume two of a five-part series. Okay, there's the info on the book. All right, it was copyrighted in 1895. And just to further prove that the, uh, the so-called white man today, whose uh, sons and daughters of the Greeks and Romans were indeed Edomites, and the history, the secular history, um, and the Bible connects them to it. The secular history matches up to the Bible. All right. Um, it even tells you from the reign of Hycranus in here, 135 B.C. to the completion of the Babylonian Talmud 500 C. So what they're trying to do is they're uh, what they don't do, like, like is they today that the modern Jewish people don't tell you that they're those Idumians com converts. And there was a, there was a, a huge friction between the real Israelites who were keeping using the Bible as the law, statutes and commandments. Versus these new converts who were bringing in the Talmud and the Kabbalah because they're not the children of Israel and the law, statutes, and commandments are not for them, but yet they still wanted to claim to be Jewish. Uh, thus, it seems as if this was a campaign to hide the fact that they were Esau and not Jacob, hence the reason why they stopped using that name. But let's get into the book. This is going to be a short but precise lesson. There will be a second lesson that comes from this, which will be a little bit more detail a little more meaty but this one still is going to get the point across so this is uh page one in chapter one all right um now i'm just going to read to page three and then i'm going to read some scriptures and make a little commentary you know um so yeah from here to the top of here and then i'm going to give some scriptures and some commentary so not much on this first one all right um the crowning point of the period of war with Antiochus uh, uh, Sidates, Siege of Jerusalem, Treaty of Peace, and the Parthian War, Hycranius joins Antiochus' successful campaign of Hycranius against the Samaritans and Idumeans. The Idumeans forced to embrace Judaism. So Edomites, white people, were forced to under John Hycranius. Okay? Um... And then it says, the Idumeans were forced to embrace Judaism, the destruction of the Samaritan temple at Gerizim and the capital, Samaria, uh, eternal affairs, the parties, the Pharisees, the, Sadi the Sadducees, the Essenes, the rise of the constitutions, their doctrines and their relations to one another, the Sanhedrin, strained relations between Hycranius and the Pharisees, the death of Hycranius. All right. So that's that. And that's and all that is pretty much covered also in the Apocrypha. OK. The reign of Hycranius is one is once the pinnacle of the turning point of this period. He not only uh, carried out his father's work, but completed it under his predecessors. Judea was confined to a narrow space. And even within these bounds, there were territories and possessions of foreign foes. Hycranius enlarged the boundaries to the north and to the south and thus released the state from external pressure that had been restrict restricting its growth. His genius for war was aided by fortunate circumstances in bringing about these happy results. The reign of Hycranius um, corresponds in brilliancy to that of Solomon. It resembles it also in another respect. Both reigns commenced and ended amid disturbing sadness and gloom. Because what, what, why he's making this comparing to Solomon? Because Solomon joined unto all those strange wives and started following their ways, and, and Hycranus joined the Edomites unto un, unto Israel. All right, basically with this this conversion thing. All right, it said both reigns commenced and ended amid disturbing sadness and gloom. 
while the middle of each reign was happy and prosperous, when Solomon first came to the throne, he was opposed by Adjona, the pretender of the crown, when he had to subdue, all right, who, whom he had to subdue, and upon Hyrcanus, a similar but difficult task devolved that carried on a struggle with several opponents. One of these opponents was his brother-in-law, Ptolemy ben Habab, the murderer of his father, who had also sought after Hyrcanus' life, um, it was, it was only the support of the Syrian army, however, that could make Ptolemy dangerous and inhabitants of the Jerusalem having distantly declared, declared themselves favors of Hyrcanus, which I'm going to get into part two of this particular lesson, because there was a civil war in Syria between the Edomites, the Antiochus, uh, um, uh, Sadducees and, and, and Antiochus Epiphanes rose out of that. And then this uh, this Edomite general um, named uh, Typhron, which is all throughout the uh, uh, the Book of Maccabees, he was one of the main opposers to to the Maccabees, man, mainly uh, fighting uh, John Hyrcanus, you know, and Simon. Okay, and uh, we're gonna get in get into that. All right, we're gonna break that all down. But it's right here in this book, and it's also in the Apocrypha, which which completely connects them to Esau Edom, who is the so called white man, who is Edom Rome. Okay. Um, still both his safety and his duty called upon him to punish his unscrupulous enemy to avenge his father's death. Hycranius hastened, therefore, to attack him in his fortress before Antiochus could bring his troops to his relief. And there are some uncertainty as, as to the progress of the siege and the result, according to one account, evidently somewhat embellished, Hycranius could not put his whole strength against the fortress because his mother by some it was said to be together with his brothers, had been placed on the walls by Ptolemy and there and, and they're horribly tortured. Like the true Hasmonean, the heroic Rome woman is said to have encouraged her sons to continue the siege without heeding her suffering and persevere in his efforts until the murderer of his family should receive the chastisement due to his crimes. Now, I don't know much about that story. Um, I don't recall reading that in, in the Apocrypha. All right, that particular thing. I do know about the, the woman and her seven sons, all right? But anyway, it says, Hycranus' heart was torn by conflicting feelings. Revenge toward the reckless foe urged him on whilst tender pity for his mother held him back. The fact is, however, Hycranus withdrew without accomplishment, accomplishing his purpose. It may have been the sabbatical year that prevented him from proceeding with the siege. Or well, more likely, his operations may have been interrupted by the approach of the Syrian king who was advancing with his army to glean some advantage for himself from the troubles and the confusion in Judea. And after withdrawal of Hyrcanian troops, it said that his mother and brothers were put to death by Ptolemy who fled to Philadelphia, the former Ammonite capital of Rabbah Amman, where, his, where he was favorably received by the governor Zeno Catalus. The name of Ptolemy is no more mentioned and disappears altogether from the page of history. All right. So, uh, I looked up that word Sanhedrin. All right, and why they were having difficulties? Whether whether the Sadducees, the Pharisees, were having different with the Sanhedrin because that was that Edomite influence that they were bringing into the cities of Israel. And it says, and they looked it up, and it said um, Sanhedrin sitting together, hence assembly, was a council. An assembly of 23 to 71 men appointed, appointed in every city in the land of Israel. So those are those Edomite infiltration tactics, man, because Esau would like to have a body, a senator, a ruling class. And, and quite frankly, the ruling, the, what, what the Israelites followed was the law, statutes, and commandments in the Bible, man. So you could clearly see that as you start reading some of the New Testament, okay? Uh, when, with the dealings between uh, Herod and John the Baptist and Herod and Paul, okay? So uh, let's go to uh, Isaiah 41, I mean 47, and uh, verse 6. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thy hand. Thou this show them no mercy um, upon the ancient house thou 
very heavily yoked. So, uh, so the heritage of Israel was, was infiltrated, man. The Lord allowed it to be polluted. And with who? With Edomites. Because you have Edomites to this day saying that they're Jewish, man. All right. We're in a very fight for our very own heritage, man. They're trying to deny us our heritage and give us a false one and claim to be us. All right. This is a uh, lamentation. Um, five and two. How's this book running for me right now? Lamentation is here we go. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. Okay. Um, you 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 uh you have these Edomites who who are now claiming to be us, man. Okay, and you also had uh you know uh Ptolemy, which is I mean not Ptolemy but Antiochus. Which we're gonna, which I'm gonna get into to part two. Um, who uh, came against our people and forbid us to even call ourselves Israelites anymore? Okay, that's uh, found in uh, First Maccabees 15, 33 and 34. Let's read it real quick. First Maccabees uh, 15. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is 1 Maccabees 15, uh, verses 33 and 34, all right? Uh, which most of the history that, that that I'm going to, that I was just reading and going to read out of this book, History of the Jews, is found in the 1 uh, Maccabees, like the 12th chapter through the uh, 16th chapter, a lot of that history, and, and you're going to see how it all plays out, okay? But anyway, it says that uh, this is 1 Maccabees 15 33. Then answered Simon and said unto him, we have neither taken other men's land nor holding that which appertaineth to others, but the inheritance of our fathers, which our enemies have wrongfully in their possessions a certain time. Because you have these Edomites saying that they're Jewish and still doing it to this day. All right. Wherefore, we have an opportunity to hold the inheritance of our fathers. And that's what we're doing now. We're grasping on to the inheritance of our forefathers. But these Edomites don't want to let it go, man. Even though all the evidence is showing them to be frauds and phonies, man. So like if, if this, if all these books and these scriptures were presented in a court of law, it would prove that we are exactly who we said we are and that they're the Edomites, man. Okay. Let's, uh, now I'm going to read 2nd Ezra 16, 17 through 24. All right. Which I'll probably end up reading again. But this will finish the uh, part one because we're going to go more in, in detail in part two. I just wanted to get this out the way real quick. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is first Maccabees, the, uh, 16th chapter starting in verse 17. And it says, and in, in which doing he committed a great treachery and recompense evil for good. So basically Ptolemy, um, who John Hycranius had just helped him defeat, uh, 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 Tyf uh, Tryphon and helped him get dominion. But then, but then Ptolemy set out to kill the Israelites and take our place. And that's why the scripture says, trust not thy enemy. Okay. And all that history, we're going to read about that. The wars, the, the, uh, the Syrian civil war between the Edomites. All right. And then how the Israelites joined unto Antiochus um, to fight against Typhron. And there was a long drawn out battles. And then when, when they finally defeated Typhron, then, then the Ptolemies turned on, on the Israelites, man, turned on John Hycranus. All right. So this is verse 17 in which doing he committed a great treachery and recompense evil for good. Then Ptolemy wrote those these things and sent to the king that he should send him uh, and host to aid him. And he would deliver him the country and the cities. He sent others also to Gaza to kill John and unto the tribunes. He sent letters Um to come unto him that he might give him silver, gold, and rewards. All right. And the others he sent to take Jerusalem and the mountains of the temple. Now one had run afore to Gaza and told John and his father and brethren uh, uh, that told John that his father and brethren were slain. All right. So Simon had been slain. 
And now he went to go tell John Hycranus. All right. And and quote that he told him he had sent also to slay thee also. Herefore he heard he was sore astonished. He had laid hands on them that will come to destroy him and slew them, for he knew that they sought to make him away. All right, so John was ready for him because word got to him what had happened to the to the Israelites, his brother, to to uh I mean to his father Simon and 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 to his brothers, all right? And it says uh and as concerning the rest of the acts of John, and this is John Hycranus, and, and his wars and his worthy deeds, which he did, and the building of the walls, which he made, and his doings, behold, these are written in the chronicles of the priesthood from the time he was made high priest after his father. And, the, and this very history we're reading is found in the history of the Jews, Hendrik Graffs, by G, uh, Jewish Publications, JPS, 1895, Chapter one. All right. So with that, I hope this was an edifying, uplifting lesson to the Israelites and a devastating blow to you fake Christians and you and you Edomites and you false Jews. Shalom.